Hey guys, we're gonna watch Mr. Ballin, and he's got really scary videos, uh, wild stuff, super scary. And so make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more videos like this one. This story is about a baffling disappearance that happened in 2020 in a forest in California. But the most unique part of this disappearance is the incredibly spooky twist that happened very recently. This twist is something that the Madera County Sheriff's Office, okay. who is no, in we can't. Uh, we haven't even gotten to the, stop it. <clears throat> of investigating this disappearance, they're still trying to wrap their head around what even happened. But before we get into that story, if you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, then you've come to the right place because that's all we do, and we upload once a week. So if that's of interest to you, please sign the like button up for 20, the World Health Organization, which the machine out for a weekly upload. Okay. All right, one second. Shadow's squawking. You just want to flap your wings? Huh? Huh? You want to flap your wings? Okay, here. I'll, I'll just help you. Come on. Here you go. <clears throat> What's his name? Chad? Yes. On March 11th, 2020, the World Health Organization declared that the COVID-19 outbreak was so bad that it had become a global pandemic. What? Which meant this- When did that happen? new highly infectious disease had spread virtually everywhere on the planet and so around the time this Is global really? pandemic announcement was made governments around the world began instructing their citizens to stay home and avoid all physical contact with other people outside <clears throat> of the people that you lived with the well boy and you know, honestly i i really hope they all actually listened to them and didn't uh you know go out and and not listen to them and spread the disease you know, and honestly, I bet what happened is they all listened very politely and, and well, and then, you know, the disease didn't spread and no one died. That's what happened, right? That's what happens, right? The idea being these quarantine measures would help stop the spread of the virus. <clears throat> Initially, world leaders and citizens believed these quarantine measures would have a dramatic impact and it would stop the spread. And before long, COVID would be under control and life would just kind of magically go back to normal. But unfortunately, that is not what happened. By June, so three months into the global pandemic, positive COVID cases were only going up, not down. And so it was a <clears throat> But how is that even possible? Everyone's staying inside and wearing masks. I don't understand. That's impossible. Around that point in June, that people all over the world were starting to come to terms with the reality that COVID was not this simple problem with a simple solution. It was a complex health issue that likely was going to be around for a long time, which also meant these strict I bet no one died in the story. Also That's what I would hope. likely be around for some time. <clears throat> now, the efficacy of these quarantine measures were quickly called into question, and it was all over the news and politicians. All they wanted to talk Talk about was do these measures work is it having an effect on the spread of the virus but for everyday people the real concern was not politics it was practicality how do you live a full and happy life in quarantine in june of that year 54 year chat i lived indoors without going outside for like 10 years okay you can handle it okay come on old sandra hughes was pondering <laughs> but my spring that break to that point her life had yeah really what about daytona chat what about yeah come on you can't you, what about the coleslaw wrestling come on guys not gone the way she had planned it she had been married twice actually but both relationships had ended in divorce and she had never had children she lived in beautiful maui hawaii but she hadn't really lived there long enough to consider it her home. And prior to that, for the bulk of her adult life, she'd kind of lived this nomad lifestyle, bouncing around all over the country. And so really she had never developed a home of sorts. She was an accountant by trade, but in college, she had studied not just accounting, but also wilderness survival, which she happened to be incredible at and was very passionate about. Growing up, well, she had always the been a big wrestling. outdoor enthusiast, and so she had always thought one day she would become a park <clears> ranger, and so that's why she was studying wilderness. Yeah, same. I, I hate people. See, ch chat, that's the secret. 
if you have anxiety and hate other people, like, you know, every, you expect that everyone sucks, then you won't ever want to go outside. You know what I mean? That's how I live life. Because every new person I meet tends to suck, it seems like. So, or tends to like use and stuff, you know? So it's like when, when you get used to people sucking, you just don't want to go outside. The survival in college, but as and then you get a go, bird. after she graduated college, she did not become a park ranger. She became an accountant. And now 30 years later, here she was. However, in June of that year, with COVID quarantine restrictions putting her and everyone else's life basically on pause, Sandra suddenly saw an opportunity, and that was to embrace this break from reality and spend this strange time in history back out in nature, getting back in touch with her roots as an outdoor survivalist. Of course, and so it's outdoors. at the end of that June, Sandra would sell her place in Maui, and she would move to Madera County, California, which is located smack dab in the center of California, situated just south of Yosemite National Park and just north of the Sierra National Forest. Then on June 26th, after Sandra had gotten settled in her new place in California, she would contact her family and tell them that she planned on going on this extended solo camping trip in the Sierra National Forest and that she would be in touch with them in the- It's a, every time. It's always the forest. It's always the forest. Isn't it shadow? Yeah. Coming weeks when she was back he out. Agrees. To Sandra, this trip was going to bring her lots of happiness and fulfillment, and it was going to allow her to continue to adhere to quarantine guidelines because she'd be all alone. Shortly after speaking with her family on the 26th, Sandra loaded up all of her camping equipment into her silver Saab sedan, and then she would drive from her place south and then east a little over an hour until she was deep inside of the Sierra National Forest. At some point, she would leave the main road and she would hop onto a bumpy dirt road that kind of wound through the forest, and that road would bring her out to an area called the Johnson Meadows. The Johnson Meadows are absolutely gorgeous. It looks straight out of a postcard. It's basically a straight of beautiful green meadows and then around the perimeter of those meadows are the <clears throat> see that's my thing chat i want to explore the world you know see the sights like the pretty landscapes and stuff during the day but once it hits nighttime daddy's going home you know daddy's going back to the airbnb he's going back to the hotel you know he ain't staying out thick trees of the Sierra National Forest, and then beyond those trees are the snow-capped Sierra Mountains. But despite its beauty, the Johnson Meadows are actually fairly dangerous. It's a very isolated part of the Sierra National Forest, mm, and there are lots of cougars and bears and other natural hazards in the area, so it's not really a place you go unless you're prepared to be there. That was a real and Sandra photo. was certainly that, both in terms of her survival experience and the gear she brought with her. So when Sandra drove her car right up to the edge of the Johnson Meadows, she parked her car off to the side of the road so as not to block the road. And then she got out, she collected her things from the trunk, and then she threw it over her shoulder and began hiking into the middle of the Johnson what? Meadows. What? A forest? To look Dangerous? For a How? Her campsite. Impossible. Six days later, on July 2nd, some hikers came out of the tree line into the Johnson, Johnson Meadows, Meadows oh God, and run. began walking across the center of it. And as they're walking along, they notice up ahead what looks like a tent and a campsite. They don't see anybody near it, but they clearly see someone is camping in the middle of Johnson Meadows. And so this is totally not unusual. Lots of people go hiking and camping in this area. And so these hikers just began kind of creating a wide berth around this person's campsite because they didn't want to cut right they, through the middle of it as they went across the meadow. But as they're making this kind of wide berth around this campsite, they looked over at it, and as they passed by it, they noticed that the campsite was definitely abandoned, and it looked totally destroyed, like a tornado had crossed right across it. And so when they were parallel with this campsite, Not a real photo. the hikers decided to actually go over and look at it and see what was going on. <clears throat> So they walked over to this campsite and they're looking around and they see there's a backpack that's clearly yeah, how been do you, dumped how do you, out. How do you birth while you're walking? 
contents are How many strewn kids around all over the ground. There's unopened cans of food. There's papers and documents. The tent is in ruins. I mean, the place is just a total mess. And so the hikers didn't really know what to make of this. They couldn't tell if a person had kind of intentionally ransacked the site or if maybe an animal had come through. But as a precaution, they marked down on their map where this destroyed campsite was, and then they hiked out of the forest. And when they were back in cell phone range, they called the Madera County Sheriff's Office and they reported the site. And so later that day, some Madera County Sheriffs made their way out to Johnson Meadows. And, were and sure enough, the campsite is still there. It's still in ruins and it's still abandoned. And so they would search the campsite and they would find some ID cards and the name on those ID cards was Sandra Hughes. The sheriffs would leave the forest and get in touch with Sandra's family to find out if they knew why Sandra had left her campsite the way she had. But when Sandra's family heard about the state of Sandra's campsite, they had an immediate and definitive reaction to it. They told the sheriffs that Sandra was incredibly environmentally conscious and was very cleanly. And so she would never, ever leave her campsite looking that way on purpose. Something else had to have happened. The family not would also photo. tell the sheriffs that they had not spoken with Sandra since the 26th when she started her trip. And so they had no- and This thing coming up, my new college where I have to interact with people, but I have social anxiety. Can you wish me luck? Good luck. I had that uh, the other, like a few weeks ago when my neighbor invited me over to their house. Uh, there, the, He always has new people over there and God, I hate it. I hate I I hate meeting new people, dude. It just causes so much paranoia and anxiety. No idea where she could be now. And so naturally the family was concerned, the sheriffs were concerned, and so that day they filed an official missing person report. Over the next two days, a massive search was launched in Johnson Meadows and the surrounding area to look for Sandra. And so hundreds of people were out on foot. They had sniffer dogs out. There were helicopters in the air. Sniffer and dogs. during the search, the Madera County Sheriff's Office was interviewing anybody who was out there, hikers, campers, and asking them if they had had any contact with Sandra because Sandra was actually quite distinctive looking. Before she left for this trip, she had dyed her hair blue. But unfortunately, no- Lib. Lib, SJW, Snowflake, Lib. One had seen Sandra, and despite this massive Sorry. search effort over these first two days, nothing new was discovered that could lead authorities to where to she it. had gone. But then on July 4th, so two days into her disappearance, Sandra Hughes was spotted. Sponsor. Before we get to the rest of today's video, uh, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, NordVPN. Oh, okay. <laughs> they keep in short to the like button. So if that sounds as enticing as I think it does, then now NordVPN.com. Again, go to. Okay. Some hikers <clears throat> were cutting through the. <laughs> she definitely thinks gay people should be able to kiss. <laughs> Fucking live. Thinking gay people should be able to touch. Johnson Meadows area and they saw this woman who was just standing doing? off to the side of the meadow what she was doing? by herself she had no oh, ear with her your she was barefoot she had a black shirt on she had blue jeans on she had a bruise Definitely on her has face pronouns. and she was just kind of standing there as if she was waiting for something and as these hikers walked past her they definitely noticed her but she didn't wave them down. She didn't act distressed. She didn't look like she needed any help. They just kind of saw this person minding their own business and they walked right on past her. It wasn't until those hikers got to the parking lot that they saw all these missing person flyers out for Sandra Hughes and they would see the picture of Sandra and they would see her distinctive blue hair that they would say, oh my goodness, the barefoot woman we just saw standing in the forest is Sandra Hughes. And so the hikers called the sheriff's office. The sheriff's office got really jazzed up. They headed out to where they had claimed to have seen her. They got jazzed up. <laughs> hey, I think we found her. Oh God, I'm all jazzed up now. <laughs> Let's go get her. I'm so jazzed up. What, what a descriptive word to say. <laughs> but there was no sign of her and there was nothing left behind He's that would ghost, indicate where she might have gone. 
The following day, on July 5th, <clears throat> Sandra's vehicle was located, but Sandra was not with it. It was found five miles north of where her destroyed campsite was in Johnson Meadows, and the vehicle was actually at the bottom of a ravine, and this ravine was right next to a winding forest road. And so after looking at the damage on the front of the car, authorities believed Sandra was driving the car on that road and then hit a tree, and then she rolled off the embankment down to the bottom of the ravine. There was no blood inside the vehicle, so it wasn't that. immediately clear if this accident had actually done any physical physical harm to Sandra. But the most significant thing about the discovery of this vehicle was the state of Sandra's personal effects that had been in the vehicle. Clearly, after the vehicle had come to a stop at the bottom of the ravine, someone had pulled out all of the things inside of the car, all of Sandra's personal things, and kind of thrown them carelessly all over the forest floor, as if they were kind of rummaging through her car, looking for something, throwing things as they went. And the Madera Weird. County Sheriff's couldn't help but think that this was <clears throat> eerily similar to how her campsite looked in Johnson Meadows, where all of her personal effects had just kind of been chucked all over Us. the place. At this point, authorities did not believe Sandra was actively trying to evade them. Instead, they thought, you know, maybe Sandra got hurt, maybe back at the campsite crazy? or even during this <clears throat> car accident, and the injury has impaired her cognitive abilities, and so now, you know, maybe she's lost in the woods and doesn't know what's going on. Uh, there I was look like a super villain petting my bird. Mm. Yes. Yes. Some discussion about foul play maybe being involved, but that to. was largely discounted. And so a decision was made to just leave her vehicle where it was at the bottom of the ravine, Locker. thinking, you know, maybe Sandra is going to come back to this vehicle. And maybe that's why all these things have been strewn around, because she's coming back and looking for something. And so authorities left a note in the window of her vehicle that said, you know, hey, Sandra, we're looking for you. Please call this number if you see this. And then at the bottom of this note, it said, your family really misses you. The search for Sandra would continue over the next several days with a new focus this is so funny. Warning. A check marks other. Your family is worried about you. Failure to pay permitted fee. Parking violation. Abandoned. Sorry, your family's worried. Why do they have to use a I mean, I guess they have to use a ticket. But it's just such a weird to thing. See. The search for Sandra would continue <clears throat> over the next several days. It's a weird with a new focus around the area where the car had been found, but nothing new was discovered. Then, on the evening of July God 12th, so goo. one week after the vehicle was discovered, a team of searchers had made their way two and a half miles north of the vehicle, and they were actually inside of Yosemite National Park. They were barely inside, and they were right up along this lake called the Spotted Lake. Now, this is an area that's very difficult to get to. There are no main roads that get there. There are no main trails that get there. And so the searchers, they're up in this very rugged part of Yosemite, and as they're walking along with their flashlights out, they see a sleeping bag, and it's laying out right in the middle of the ground, in the middle of nowhere, and it looks like it's been used recently, and it would turn out that sleeping bag was Sandra's. But again, when they brought all the searchers out to that area and they searched all around the spotted lake and all over this area, there was no sign of Sandra. At this point, authorities were totally baffled. <clears throat> On a map, Johnson Meadows, where her first campsite was, then her vehicle, and then this sleeping bag were all more or less in a straight line going south to north. It was almost like Sandra, from the day she went missing, had just begun slowly working her way to the north, but she was doing it without any equipment and most likely barefoot in an area that was steep and rugged and dangerous and full of cougars and bears. And so authorities knew if they didn't find her soon, even if she was doing this on purpose, she was likely going to succumb to the elements. The search for Sandra would continue for another week after the discovery of her sleeping bag. But by that time, by July 20th, there hadn't been any new developments. No one you had seen travel, Sandra. There were no true. new leads. And so, unfortunately, <clears throat> the authorities had to scale back their search. About three weeks later, on August 9th, two hunters were driving down this very desolate forest road located several miles to the east of where Sandra's car had been found. And as they're driving along, they turn this corner, and as soon as they do, they look up ahead, and they see there's this woman. Now, real she's not standing on road. the road or even right next to the road. She's kind of tucked up a ways on this hillside in the trees, and she's leaning up against a tree. 
And so the hunters are looking at her and they're seeing that she's got no equipment with her. There's no backpack, there's nothing, no tent, and there's no other people anywhere. I mean, they're in a very isolated part of this forest and it's odd to see people here to begin with, let alone this woman who's just kind of casually standing Ooh. up against a tree. And so the hunters, they're like, okay, let's drive up and see if she needs something. And so they pull up right up alongside her. She's still, you know, 10, 15 feet away from them, tucked up in the trees. And so they roll their windows down and they're looking up at her, trying to kind of flag her and get her attention. But the woman is not paying attention to them at all. She just continues to prop herself up against this tree and just kind of stares off into the distance. And so the hunters, they're looking up at her thinking, what's going on with this woman? And they kind of called out to her. They tried to wave her down, but it's there ghost. was nothing. There was no interactions with them. And so ultimately the hunters thought, okay, well, we don't know what this woman's doing, but it seems like she's here on purpose and she doesn't seem like she's in distress. She doesn't look hurt. And so they just decided to carry on. And so they drove off. And then later that day, they would see one of the missing person flyers for Sandra Hughes. And they saw the blue hair in the picture and they were like, oh my goodness, the woman we saw standing up against the tree in the middle of the forest was that woman, Sandra Hughes. The hunters would contact the Madera County Sheriff's Office and report the sighting, and they would describe Sandra as looking slightly thinner than the picture of her on her missing person flyer, and they would also say she was wearing overalls and a floral t-shirt which was interesting to sheriffs because the last time Sandra was sighted, which was on July 4th, when those hikers had seen her barefoot with a bruise on Dude, her face really near bad Johnson at searching Meadows, for people. she had been wearing a black shirt <clears throat> and blue jeans. And so clearly she had changed her outfit, but that didn't really make any sense because she had left all of her things at the campsite and her car. And so the whole situation was just totally weird to the sheriffs. But regardless, they headed out to that road where the hunters had seen Sandra. But like always, Sandra was not there and there was no sign she had ever been there. After this, Sandra's case went cold. And so authorities and her family began to brace for the reality that they likely would never see her again. But there was one more terrifying twist Evil twin. coming. A year later, on Wednesday, July 21st, 2021, Jake Gorba, his wife... No, it'll end with, what do you mean? She died 10 years ago. Dun, dun, dun. Do you think it should be way smaller? If you're wanting it as a keychain, yeah. But if you're wanting it as like a little uh, puppet, little, little like puppet looking dude, no. Wife Victoria and their three young children were driving in Jake's off-roading vehicle up the steep forest road in the middle of Sierra Nevada. Puppet? What? National Forest on their way to the top of Shut Eye Peak. Shut Eye Peak is a mountain in the Sierra National Forest with stunning panoramic views from the top, and it's located about five miles to the south of Johnson Meadows, where Sandra's first campsite was discovered. So Jake and his family, they're driving their way up this long, bumpy, winding forest road, making their way towards the top of Shut Eye Peak. And when they get about halfway, the kids in the back start complaining that they're hungry. And so Jake and Victoria, they decide, you know what, let's just pull over at the next natural stopping point and we'll have a quick lunch and then we'll continue on the rest of the way. And as luck would have it, the road they were on would actually level off and lead them to this kind of short, flat section of the mountain. And in this flat section was this beautiful little meadow that butted up against some trees. And so Jake and his wife thought, this is a great place okay. to stop and have a little picnic. And so he pulled his truck over on the side of the road. He parked Crap. it, he turned the engine off, and then as Jake and his wife are kind of gathering up their things before they get out of the vehicle to go prepare this picnic lunch, they hear their three-year-old son named Caden, who's in the back seat right near a window, start talking. And so Jake and Victoria instinctively turned around to see who Caden was talking to. And they saw Caden was not talking to himself. He was not talking to his siblings. He was turned and looking out his open window, looking across this small meadow into the forest, engaged in some sort of intense conversation with somebody outside. And so Jake and Victoria, they see their son and they look out the window in the direction he's looking and talking and they don't see anyone. And so Victoria... Dude, it's a fucking ghost, isn't it? She looks at her son and goes, Hayden, <clears throat> who are you talking to? And what he would say to her would send goosebumps all over her body. And in fact, what would happen over the next several minutes from that point onward was so unsettling that Jake and Victoria decided, you know what, we're not going to the top of Shut Eye Peak. We're turning around and we're leaving. 
And so they would speed out of the forest and they would get back home. And that night, Victoria would make a Facebook post about what her son said and this terrifying ordeal they experienced on Shut Eye Peak. And she would post it. And that night, the Madera County Sheriff's Office would reach out to Victoria via a Facebook message and they would tell her, hey, we saw your post. Can we please speak to you and your son? And so the next day, the sheriffs met up with the Gorba family, and after speaking with Caden and hearing what he had to say, they would leave that exchange just as unsettled as Caden's parents. The day before, when Victoria turned around and looked at Caden and said, who are you talking to? Caden would turn away from the window and look at his mom, and he would say, There's a woman out there and she needs our help. And he starts pointing out the window. And so again, Jake and Victoria, they look from their son back out the window into the tree line, which is where Caden is pointing, and they don't see anyone. And so they turn back to Caden and they say, honey, we don't see anyone out there. And Caden, at this point, he becomes emphatic. And he says, mom, you gotta trust me. She's right there. She needs our help. She's lying face down. Her legs are straight up and she's dead. And so at this point, Victoria and Jake are looking at their son thinking, what's going on here? Jake promptly hops out of the car and just starts running into the woods to see what's going on. Is there a person out here? But he's out there looking around and there's no one. And while he's out there, his son is pointing in the direction of where he is, claiming there's this woman right near him. And so Jake's looking around thinking, there's no one out here. I have no idea what my son's on about. And so he's spooked. He runs back to the car. And when he gets inside, Caden is still looking out the window. He's pointing and he's talking to this dead woman that needs their help. And so Jake and Victoria, they were horrified. They turned around, they left. And then that night when Victoria made that Facebook post, she included in the post what this woman apparently looked like based on what Caden said. And what Caden said was she had a black t-shirt on, blue jeans on, and blue hair. And so when the Madera County Sheriff's Office saw this post that described seeing a person in a black shirt, blue jeans, and blue hair, they knew that description matched Sandra Hughes. The and so when the sheriffs the met up with the Gorba family, they brought with them a lineup of several women. And they went right up to Caden, and without giving him any extra information, they just showed him all these pictures of all these women. And they said, Caden, can you identify in any of these pictures the woman you saw in the woods? And Caden looks at these pictures and he picks out three pictures. All three are Sandra Hughes. The sheriffs, along with Caden and his father, they would return to that section of Shut Eye Peak to search the tree line near the meadow to see if there was any sign of Sandra or any indication that she had been there. But like always, there was nothing. As of today, we still have no idea where Sandra is or what happened to her, and nobody has any idea what to make of the very strange sightings of her that occurred after she went missing. It's all just one big mystery. If anyone has any information about Sandra... Okay, that's crazy. Because this is new. This happened recently. Now it's time to walk away I hope you enjoyed your stay Did you laugh or cry or maybe subscribed? I'll thank you either way You know I will miss you I hope you return Tell your friend or your mother to get me more views, please.